Eel Sound Radio, we back in the building. Yes, sir. Top of the one o'clock hour, and we checking in with our guest, Joycey J of the Juice Chicago. How you feeling? What's the word? Feel good to be here. Thank you for coming through. Happy Easter Sunday to you. Okay, it is Easter, y'all. For sure, for sure. Now, I did the, did the, okay, I was finna fuck your name right up. <laughs> <laughs> you just said. What she was about Look, to say? I was finna say Juicy J. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> said, no, it's Joycey. Joycey J. I was finna ask, did did the name of your your radio station and your name did they like correlate with each other or did you piggyback off one or the other? I didn't even think of that. That's a good question. Good question, but no. So um actually when I was in college, people people used to call me Juicy for real. But like I honestly never thought it would compare to my radio show, The Juice Chicago. Um, when I was thinking of the name for the show, I just wanted to think of like empowerment. Mm -hmm. And I just thought of women since I'm a woman that created the show. So I was like, what's better than, which my logo is a black woman squeezing a juice box. I'm like, what's better than a black woman squeezing a juice box? And I had oh, to yeah. add Chicago in it. Right. So, um, but yeah, my name and uh, <laughs> from the show different though. <laughs> So uh, how did the uh, how did the show come about? Like, what year did it start? Were you in school when you started? So I graduated from Southern Illinois University in mm -hmm. 2018, and I actually started the Juice when I came home from college. Mm -hmm. um, when I came home, you know, I was that college and where I wanted to put uh, what I studied to use. I just got in thirty to forty thousand dollars of debt, so I was like, what can I do? You know, what what career do I want to get into? And I realized I always loved talking. Mm -hmm. I always loved entertainment. I always had a camera. I actually started off uh, as a camera woman. Mm -hmm. Like I would go to events and just take pictures and videos of people. I actually I started off with myself first, um, and I knew that I just couldn't sit at a desk all day and have a nine to five. Right. So I knew that media was my calling. For sure. And how did you come about with establishing so much in media, like uh, public relations, uh, media, like doing actual camera work? Like, what made you want to, you know, pursue everything with it? So how did it, it started, literally, it started from me walking out of my mother's daycare center. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom has a daycare. So as I was in the midst of trying to find my career, uh, every day I would help my mother at her daycare. And one day I was leaving out of her daycare and uh, me, I'm a high believer of speaking what you want into existence. Sure. So no matter who I meet or where I go, I always speak what I want mm -hmm. because I believe the person standing next to you could actually help it come true. Facts. Um, so literally as I was leaving out of my mom's daycare, I ran into someone and um, they people will always say I look interesting because mm -hmm. I'm always smiling. I'm just a happy person. Mm -hmm. um, so he asked, he was like, hey, do you do anything? And I was like, no, but one day I'm going to have a show. Right. Do you do anything? Literally. <laughs> you know, he was like, hey, what do you do? Do you do anything? Right. And all I know is I'm like, look, one day I'm going to have a show. Right. That's, that's all I know. I don't know how it's going to happen, mm -hmm. but I'm going to have a show. And he was like, you want a show? And I was like, absolutely. So I don't know if uh, anyone are familiar with Truth Radio. Um, they're no longer there anymore. They used to be on 87th Street. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, he told me about his friend that owned that studio. Mm -hmm. And at first when he told me, I thought he was lying. I'm like, hold on, this sounds too good to be true. For sure. I'm like, so you telling me y'all about to give me a show? And he was like, yeah, come on, come to Truth Radio and we go help you get started. So uh, I literally went there the next day. And uh, that's when I started the juice. So that started the end of the, the end of 20, no, the beginning of 2019. Okay, that's a, that's a good story. So let me, yeah. let me ask her this real so, quick: Did did you watching your mother carve her own path in the world also lay the foundation to you want to be an entrepreneur and not sit behind that desk? Absolutely, absolutely. My mother, um, shout out to all the old school mothers. My mom believed in work, work, work. You gotta go to school. You gotta graduate. You have to get a job. So, um, my mom, she actually can't have the mentality. She didn't like the camera. She believed in um, put what you just went to school for to use, you right. know, find a job and, and, and sit there. But what I love about my mother, she always let me follow my own path in my career. She never tried to hold me back. She always wanted me to do it. Um, and my mom, you know, she don't know how to work a cell phone. She's my mom's 60, 61. Um, so everything was so new to her. So I loved how I, I was just I would teach her. I would have to teach her everything. Um, so it was kind of cool. Me and my mom were totally opposite, but I got my passion and my drive from my mother, my mom from the projects, but she ended up buying the whole block. Mm -hmm. My mom is like the real estate euro, and uh, she actually brought me my first condo when I turned 22. So she threw me in the game. So I got her, I got the hunger from my mom. 
Shout out That's to your OG on sure. my baby. Come on, mama. <laughs> I up. love my mama. What was it like at 22 having your own crib? Lit. Like, you feel Come me? on, man. They tried kicking me out and everything. I, I was the youngest one with this condo um, in High Park in a really good area in Chicago. Um, and I still have it to this day. I moved out. Because you know they try finding me, mm-hmm. like so you know parties. <laughs> you know yeah, I'm, I'm coming home from college. I'm having parties. I'm oh, having yeah. get-togethers. Of course, they like come like, on. Too loud and all. Hey, bed, every man. Tuesday was Taco Tuesday at my house. Turned them <laughs> up upside down. Now, when you in these spaces, like you know, you in high park in a condo, so you know what comes with that and what type of people comes with that. Did that um necessarily uh prep you in any way for professionalism coming out of college? Because you know, in college you got some wild stuff going on, but. Hopping out of college, jumping into a uh, um, owning a condominium in Hyde Park, did that prep you? I don't think they prepped me. I think more so my mother uh, prepped me just with her having so many buildings. And she also has a school. I learned really everything from her. Um, My environment, they didn't want me there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They was like, can y'all get this young girl out of our building? Exactly. So uh, my mom, she really kept me sane. And, you know, staying in media, uh, meeting people and meeting other people in real estate, um, like the Downing Brothers. Uh, they are really, they're going crazy buying builders and property. So really just keeping certain people in my circle that helped me get to my light. For sure. And to jump into media 2009, right? Mm-hmm. It's 2022. Mm-hmm. Like I, I've personally seen a lot of people come and go. Like you say, exactly. you went to True Chicago and they are no longer there you feel me so how are you able to to i would say just continue to reinvent yourself because that's what you got to do to stay relevant in this game because people can get old and washed up in media but the cool thing about media is so many different lanes from producing to publishing to directing to content creating um to everybody to studios everybody needs somebody that's in media um, so a new venture that I just started, uh, I'm now a publicist, and I've been a I've been doing PR for about eight months now, and it literally just changed my life within the snap of a finger. How has it been going in such a short span of time? Amazing, uh, amazing. I have really good clients now. Um, you guys probably are familiar with one of my clients, uh, Big Groove. He's a dancing sensation. Oh, yeah, I be changing. Yeah, Groove and Gorilla. That's, that's, he changed his name to Big Groove. But, yeah, it, it was Groove and Gorilla. Um, but, you know, being in PR, I'm traveling. And it started off with radio. You know, when you're doing radio, you're meeting so many people from producers to artists. Mm-hmm. Um, so that really opened the door to uh, being a publicist. Uh, so I literally took it and ran with it. You know, uh, I literally, and so I minored in PR when I was in school. I majored in speech communication and I got a minor in public relations. But I honestly never thought I wanted to be a publicist. Mm-hmm. The reason that I became a publicist, I was sitting down one day, because I'm going to say this, it's not a lot of money in radio. You know, I have mm-hmm. bills. We, I have places I want to go. Um, and of course, on radio, you can get sponsors and deals, but you got to work and go out there and, and find those sponsors exactly. and make sure people believe in you. Uh, so I was just sitting down one day. I'm like, man, I need some more money. Mm-hmm. Like, what can I do to get some more money? So I literally, I was like, let me put my minor to use. And uh, I looked up PR and I started doing it. It's it been a blessing ever since. For sure. So, yo, um, so what was your major? What was your actual major? Speech communication. Speech communication. All right. Because uh, in my department, we kind of shrunk uh, journalism. So all of that was in one. You know, we didn't necessarily have that focus of public relations. Mm-hmm. So, like, for you to turn your minor into, like, a major, you know what I'm saying, a major breakthrough for you, and, like, come uh, going all these places with public relations, like, you know what I'm saying? You say you with a uh, big groove now. Mm-hmm. So, um how was it working with him? Because I know y'all be a lot of places. You know, he got a lot of stuff going on himself, and you handling it. Always traveling, uh-huh. always on the road. I'm actually leaving this Tuesday. We're going to uh, L.A. Um, sure. It's a lot of bookings, a lot of bookings. And me, with my clients, I like to be hands-on. I like to be there. I like to know things, capture content, because um, I love curating and, di- and directing things as well. I know how to get things viral. You mm-hmm. know, it's all marketing. It's all a marketing strategy. You got to sure. give people what they want to see. Mm-hmm. So I just love to be that person to give the internet what they want to see. And do you think that comes from um, you saying you want to be an entertainer? You think that comes from that? Yes. For sure. Yes. Um, and entertaining. So my acting, you know, acting has always, i always been super animated ever since I was little. Like mm-hmm. I started off in plays. I was in choir. Um, high school musical. I just love being on stage. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love, you know, portraying different people. 
So I feel like that really just opened the door to PR and radio and kept, you know, in the back of my head, I'm like, yeah, entertainment in the industry is, is for me. For sure. Nah, you always on the move. And a lot of people say they want that life, you feel me? But not a lot of people can handle that life, being in L.A. today, New York tomorrow, D.C. Wednesday. You know, how are you able to handle that constant just traveling and still having to show up every day? That is a really, really good question. How am I able to handle that? I just say I do it. I don't even think about it. You know, some days, some nights I, I think about sleep, but then I'm like, wait, do I really need sleep? And, of course, they say, yeah, sleeping is good. But, honestly, where I'm at right now in life, I say, look, sleeping is for when I die. Oh, I'm, man. I'm sleeping is for, for when I'm six feet under the dirt, man. I, I Like, right now, I'm so hungry. I, I've always had, like, a real hunger uh, motivation. And I, it's like I, I got to get to it. So if I'm going to one city, I'm ready to go to the next. I come home, pack, unpack, wash, and I'm going again. So I love it. It's like I'm on a, a life high right now, y'all. Rockstar lifestyle. <laughs> you know? <laughs> hey, rock star. Like, even my diet been messed up because we just got back from one tour. We went to five different cities in um, 10 days. Oh, man. In 10 days. So I, I've been going with it, man. Sound Radio, we back in the building. Yes, sir. We checking back in with our guest, Joycey J. We back like we never left. For sure. Now, <laughs> you say, yeah, talk about you it. You say Jay. you hit five cities in 10 days. Who? Yes. yes how how taxing is that on the body? Uh, It's tiring. It's definitely tiring, especially from the flights. The flights is the most irritating part, but it's like once you get there, it's like I'm, I'm ecstatic. It's like, okay, what's next? Let's work. Mm -hmm. um, so really, you know, it's all with that person. Like it's all with your mental. You know, like, that's take me back to hunger and how how bad you want certain opportunities. Because um, I know once I land, it's, it's go time. Like I don't even think about okay, let me go get ready or no, I'm, I'm ready to work. Um, now at night, you know, that's when I'm, I'm ready to chill. Normally when we travel, um, a lot of my clients they like to go out to enjoy the clubs in the cities. Now at that time, I'm checked out. Mm -hmm. Like I really don't care about clubs. But getting content, that's my goal. For sure. Now, uh, what cities did you actually go to? So we went to New York, Houston, D.C., Jersey, Mississippi, oh, man. Atlanta, back to Missouri, then D.C. again, then from D.C. to Chicago. All in that order? Yes. Oh, man, you in different time zones and stuff. And Look, okay. How was you get, like, you say you already spoke on uh, um, not getting enough uh, much sleep through these times. So what was, like, your sleep schedule? <laughs> My sleep schedule was off. It was really, really off. But the most sleep I really got was on a plane. That's why whenever I get on a flight, I just, I knock out. Like, Me too. Look, but as soon <laughs> as I feel them walking down the aisle for them snacks, I mm -hmm. get my snacks and I'm back to sleep. <laughs> As soon as they say phone off, um, knocked out. What? I don't know. It's just something about taking off on, like it was your ears popping, all that ain't shown, like experiencing none of that. <laughs> nah. What would you say is is your favorite process of of going through this? Because, like you say, you in different cities, different states, and basically you living a life low key. You know what I'm saying? You traveling, you seeing. America as you should so what's your favorite part of all this other than like you say getting the content meeting people um, meeting content creators and meeting directors and meeting influencers that's what really excites me and uh, character is everything especially energy you know um, I've met people and been in rooms with people that I thought I couldn't have reached to but it's like once you in the room with these people and you start talking it's like dang we Okay, sometimes you may know more than yeah. that person. Um, so it's, it's really um, eye-opening, humbling, and uh, it, it teaches It's a lot. It, it teaches a lot. How do you choose the people that you work with, or do they choose you? They choose me. They choose me. So what I do on my uh, end, I just promote myself. I tell everybody, if you 
uh, are an entrepreneur or influencers, promote yourself. That's the best thing you can do. And I feel from there, people come. So normally what I do, I post my flyer. I have a PR flyer. I have a managing flyer and a radio um, promo. And when I post, they come. People either mm -hmm. DM me or e email me. Do you think um, when it comes to like promoting yourself, setting you know setting yourself up, especially jumping a new avenue, you went from media to PR, and um, is it hard for people, and especially now that you talk about it, now that you on the road, is it hard for people to keep up with what you got going on? Like, does it come with a lot of fallouts or people who just can't catch up with your current speed? So I wouldn't say it comes with fallouts, but it comes with. I feel like it brings people to me more mm, now, for sure. right? you know, because they're like, wait, so how are you, how are you doing this? You do radio and PR? Mm -hmm. And what I tell people, anything is possible. Do not ever put a limit to yourself and just box yourself in to one career. Because, um, you know, people always ask this question, like, where do you see yourself in the next five years? I never even seen myself here two years ago, mm -hmm. you know, so I say, with any career, you have to live and take it and take the most and best advantage of any situation possible. Um, because like I said, you can be sitting in a room with someone that can change your life. Uh, a lot of people that come from Chicago say crabs in a bucket mentality, you feel me? But you sitting here saying, hey man, I know everybody is capable of something. Everybody can accomplish great things. Therefore, I'm gonna reach out and I'm gonna see what's to you, you feel me? So. Speak on on that aspect of, of Chicago and how you view it. Chicago definitely is the crab in a barrel. Um, I met a lot of successful people from Chicago that felt that they had to move out of Chicago just to continue boosting their career. Uh, even with mine personally and the, the level of where I'm at right now, um, a lot of people in Chicago – they don't want to help me anymore because they see what I'm doing. They just look and uh, and and send my page and stories out. So what I'm just learning is, which is sad, you have to get respect outside of your city first for people in your city to respect you, um, which is the sad truth, the sad truth. But I even said, you know, personally down the line, I'm going to eventually have to move out of Chicago to get to where I want to get to. Because I even remember, you know, I wanted mentors when I started off doing radio. Like, I reached out to so many people just to help me, you know, to just lead me in the right direction. No one wanted to mentor me. Um, but it took for me to find a mentor out of town. Uh, actually, right now, shout out to my mentor. I have one of the dopest mentors. Um, she lives in Atlanta. Her name is Trey Davenport. She's been a publicist for 30-plus years now. Amazing woman. Um, and so, you know, I also feel with life, everything happened for a reason. You know, when one door closed, a million other open. I hear a lot of people saying, speaking on getting mentors and people to guide them, how important has that been to, to your growth over the past two years? So important. So important. And what's crazy is I just met my mentor this year. I've been looking for a mentor my entire life, other than my mother. My mother, she was my first teacher, but I've always wanted someone in my career, and I just found someone this year. And it's like a refresher, you know? It, like, before I react to certain things, now I just hit up my mentor. It's like, how should I go about this? You know, I'm, I'm happy that I'm working with someone that's been in the game for 30 plus years, because they've been through what I've been through over a million times now. Yeah. So I feel like it's, it's a huge, um, it's a huge weight off of you because you have someone you can count on. Nothing better than a team, and nothing is better than someone that believes in you. And the cool thing about my mentor, we help each other hand in hand. She believe in me. For sure. What uh, what gave like what you think that she saw in you actually? Like what did she ever tell you what she saw in you? So I met her at a Coach Stormy event. Uh, Stormy Wellington. She's a millionaire, and she has uh, conventions for women to come on a panel. Panel, and uh, actually Rick Ross was just there. So I met my mentor at that women's convention. Mm -hmm. And so when I seen her, me, I, I love. I, I outsource people, so I'm always asking like, "Hey, what do you do? What do you do? Where are you from?" And uh, I found out she did PR. So I get to ask, and she wasn't from Chicago. I'm like, yes, okay, you're not from Chicago, cool. And another thing that I love when I meet people outside of Chicago, that just broadened my revenue, mm -hmm. you know, that broadened platforms and people that I can meet when I meet people from other cities. So um, 
I actually asked her on spot. I said, hey, look, I've been looking for a mentor my entire life. Can you please mentor me? Mm. And she's betrayed. She was a, a a hard rock. She didn't, of course, just say yes. She wanted to know what can I do? What do I come with? Because doing PR, you know, we have media lists. We have contacts. Mm. You know, you can't just come to a publicist and say, hey, mentor me, because they can look at it as, oh, you just want my contact list. Yeah, you just right. want my media You're list. Exactly. You know? So she was like, okay, I got to see how you coming first before I even can open that door for you. So I just showed her how I was coming. You know, I, she's seen some of my clients. I showed her some work that I've done and my list that I've created myself, because yes, I highly believe before you go reaching your hand out, bring something to the table. You know, uh, be a hand in hand with anybody that you're working with. And she's seen that I was that. Now, being that you were looking for a mentor so long, like, are you open to being that person that people can come to and, and you help guide them? Absolutely. But I do charge consultation fees. <laughs> um, definitely. Uh, and I consultation fees is just with people that's st trying to start off mm -hmm. doing little things from podcast shows to um, how to properly interview someone, how to write blogs or uh, journalist lists. So in those ways, yes, I would help people. But mentoring, um, I don't know if I – I probably could mentor now, but I feel like I still want to learn more before I even want to take something heavy like that on. Yeah. For sure, and I got a question. How important is um, asking questions? Cause I remember one time – uh, well, I was just talking about mom, to my mama about this earlier. She always she always told me that I was always the child that wanted to know why or the extent of something. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was in college, one of the best things that helped me with um, journalism was just asking. Like it's a um, it's a organization called NABJ. I'm sure you heard of it. I love that. Yeah. But so I um, it was a it was a um, a newscaster from Baltimore that came out of school and talked about NABJ. And I was just like. Um, what does NABJ stand for? You National know? Association of Black Journalists. Uh huh. And at the time, I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? So after that, he he uh, that was the top. That was the first question asked. And after his whole segment, he um he held me back and signed me up for NABJ. You know, so asking the question changed my trajectory. So how is it important is asking the question, especially being in media? How important is that for you? It's so so important. It's so important asking questions and reaching out. For sure. And and if you need help, let someone know you need help because you can't do this alone. I know I can't. Like I have a team, you know, um, and I, I prayed for a good team and a loyal team. Um, so and with my team, you know, I they luckily, you know, they found me. But when they did, I, I I always let them know how thankful I am. And I even ask people on my on my team, I ask them questions because I want them to know, like, hey, we're a part of this together. Mm -hmm. um, just because I started the juice, I still want you guys to put input in this and, and make it your home just as much as it's mine. Sure. So asking questions, reaching out, and building, that is tremendously important. For sure. And talk about a day-to-day -day with the juice. Like, you know, I feel like we talked about everything around and what you implemented. But, like, talk about a day-to-day, -day, like a radio segment, like what we having right now. Yes, yes. So, first off, shout-out to Illinois Radio. Y'all sure, been doing y'all sure. stuff for a while. Appreciate it. Um, the juice. So, we're all about uh, – so I'm a woman, and I started it revolving around black woman empowerment mm. because I remember when I first came home from school, I didn't see a lot of women with, with radio shows, mm. just, you know, smaller platforms like trying to do podcasts. Um, so with my show, we have juicy topics. I love to keep it juicy. Mm -hmm. um, so Tavi Moe, I got my girl Tavi Moe on there with me, um, Robin E. They both went to media school, and uh, so we keep it juicy we are either ask juicy questions we love to stay hip to all the topics in media and entertainment uh, we interview from artists to entrepreneurs and uh the main thing we try to definitely promote people music and even ads on our station mm -hmm. um so day to day i say it's, it's really journalists researching we trying to see look what are we going to talk about today mm -hmm. So just finding the juice, finding the scoop, and making sure that we can teach because it's more so than just talking about topics. What can you teach your listeners? Um, so on every show, I just like to say an important fact. 
you know, probably teach somebody something that they didn't know. Yo, yo, it's your boy Biko. Make sure you head over to the Apple Store and Google Play Store and download the Illinois app right now. From there, you'll be able to stream Illinois Radio Live every Saturday from 4 to 6 p.m. As well as stream podcasts, watch interviews, check out the latest news, and so much more. So head over there to your App Store and download the Illinois app. Yo, Sound Radio, we back in the building. We checking back in with our guest, Joycey J. Oh, no, we back like we never left. For sure. Now, we, uh, Jay say, man, you got to come You gotta come with us with a fact. Yeah. So, look, I got something for you, okay? Let's Everybody should do this. Mm-hmm. As soon as you wake up, drink some water. <laughs> as soon as you go to sleep, oh, drink some water. There for you go. Sure. That water, when you wake up, hit. It man. feel good, Ooh, it though. It go through your man. body and what? you feel that it's shit. It's so refreshing. Damn. And drink some water right before you go to sleep, too. Mm-hmm. And that, um, that 4 a.m. water when you wake up in the middle of the night. Man, that water hmm. be fat, too. It's that... Man, I love drinking water. My kids drink water. And I'm going to tell y'all this little quick little story. We was at IHOP, I think, and the lady asked them, like, what y'all want to drink? So Mm -hmm. they like, water. You feel me? So (laughs) she asked them again, like, what y'all want to drink? They like, water. So she bring them lemonade. And they drink the lemonade. They like the fuck. They like this ain't water. You right. know what I'm saying? So Stop I'm looking at them. the lady like, bro, like why would you disrespect my kids like <laughs> okay. that? They, they ask they for water. water. Exactly. You know what I'm I guess that ain't normal for kids to ask for water. For wow. sure. Shout out to the water H2O. Is so good. For sure, for sure. Like, come on, I could drink it with every meal. For sure, it's it's funny too now because it's like we talking about water and you you represent the juice. Hello, <laughs> come on now, they don't call me juice for nothing. Hey, for sure. Now I had asked you off, and I'm asking you on. Uh, is it hard to juggle everything that you have going on? When you love it, no, because everything that I'm doing doesn't feel like a job. It feel I wake up and I'm happy that I'm doing it. I, I dream about what I'm doing. I wake up and have more ideas to extend what I'm doing. Um, that's why I tell everybody, you know, find something that you love to do. And y'all want to know what really helped me figure out my career? I sat down and I said, what made me happy when I was little? I questioned myself and I said, what did I like to do when I was six and five years old? Mm-hmm. And the first thing I can think of is a camera. Like, I remember for every Christmas when I was little, I would always tell my mom I wanted a camera. And so that right there just told me media is where I need to be. Facts. And, man, that's that's really what life is about in a certain aspect is, like, finding that inner child again. That's to be it. Honest, to be Your inner honest. child. Uh-huh. And also, I realized when I was little, I loved journaling. Mm-hmm. Like, I had... Of course, y'all men, but I was a super girly girl. I had, like, the poofy pink journal with the lock on there and everything. <laughs> like, And I took it everywhere with me. For and sure. if I ran across someone and if I liked something about them, I'd write it down. So that right there told me I was a journalist ever since I could remember. Facts. And I always say I always say everybody is truly a journalist. It just takes that um, uh, time to tap into that potential. I feel like everybody is really a journalist. You know what I'm saying? Yep. What was, like... Was there anything that was, like, drawn to you for wanting to, like, document people um, live, day highlights and everything? Like, sometimes people got certain um, things going on. Like, for instance, to give you an example, my thing with journalism is um, I always necessarily stayed around people who had a lot going on, but I felt like a lot of these moments would, would go undocumented. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people wouldn't interpret what they trying to express, things like that. You know what I'm saying? It ties into a lot of psychological, too. But, like, what was your reason for it? See, and that's why I love the camera. Uh Because with the camera, what can I miss? You know, like, I'm either filming. I remember, like, when I would go outside. I'm from the south side of Chicago. I grew up right on the low end. So out of all my friends, I was the only one with the camera. So if I came outside without my camera, my friends would be like, Joyce, put a camera. Come on, we trying to make a video. So it, it, like, recording and documenting things became a part of my life. And it made me happy. Mm-hmm. Like, I love being behind the lens, just capturing everything. For sure. Somebody got to do it. You know? And as I got older, I'm like, all right, now I'm about to be in front of the camera. Yeah. So I, I love that I learned both sides. And I believe with any career, learn all sides. Even from if you want to get into radio, learn how to work the board. Because that's important. When you get to an FM station, you're going to have to learn how to work that board yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so just learning the inside and the outside to anything you do is so important. Real talk. All right, that's my favorite question. If you can go back and give your younger self any advice, what would it be? To keep being you and don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. Um, you know, it have been some people in my life that have tried to deter my career and say, you can't do this. Well, do that instead. 
and the one thing that I say, and I and I'm glad that I kept um, this mind, this aspect with me as well, is do what you love. Don't let someone tell you what you're capable of. Um, and keeping that mindset has brought me to where I'm at today. You know, that's society, and that's the internet nowadays. You feel me? <clears throat> I see you clouded up on the internet. You feel me? So, how do you navigate between the oh, bullshit okay. and the good shit? Oh man, I just posted something on Facebook and said, y'all check on y'all professional friends, okay? Because the hood be wanting to come out. Let, let, <laughs> let's not get that wrong. It be wanting to come out. But when you have so much to lose, it's not worth it. Um, and I've worked so, so much to get to where I want to be. And I still feel like I'm nowhere where I want to be. Mm -hmm. I still feel like there's so much I have to learn. There's still so much I have to do. So many places I want to go and people I want to meet. Um, I would never let, because trust me, don't get it twisted. People definitely come at me. And what's crazy, a lot of men come at me more than women. A lot of men feel intimidated, I would say, uh, by me. And how I go about it, it just makes me want to go harder. It just makes me want to go harder. But you saying that little, little piece, men are intimidated by you. I, uh, on the way here, I was listening to the uh, Brilliant Idiots, and they kind of touched on something that um, Cam Newton said about uh, oh, uh, about I seen that. how a woman is supposed to be like a traditional woman. Now, with you having so much going on and you being around so many different people, and does it is it difficult for a man to be in a relationship with you because you always on the go, you around people that they seeing while they scrolling on their phones, you feel me? So it's that difficult. You just said it on the head. I be around all my look crushes celebrities. Um, but yes, it is. Um dating is actually harder for me. It's definitely harder for me. Um I've been single for one on five years now. But I haven't even been thinking of like the years I've been single because I been so heavily invested in my career um but yes i will say it's harder um because now especially the level that i'm on i want someone a man that's doing something as well um not someone that i have to well a relationship you have to teach i want him to teach me and i want to teach him but i just know what i'm bringing to the table so now it's looking i look at a man and i want to see what all they can bring to a table you see me, Jimmy? Come on. It's <laughs> hard out here for Drop it, drop it. <laughs> First time I done dropped that baby. For sure. <laughs> I got the drop. I love it. <laughs> so Now, uh, before we get out of here, tell everybody how they can get in tune with you, stay in tune with you, find everything you got going on. Yes, yes. So anyone that's artists, entrepreneurs, even if you need promo, always feel free to DM uh, my radio show, The Juice Chicago. So that's on Instagram, Facebook, The Juice Chicago. We also have an email, juicechicago6 at gmail.com, juicechicago6 at gmail.com. We'd love to support all local artists and not just artists, entrepreneurs. If you're doing something in a city, I don't care if you just had a grand opening, if you a nail tech, let The Juice know. we love love to shine light on our people if you want to get in tune with me everybody can follow me at joycey j j o y c i e j j a y underscore and dm me email me all of my contact is right there i love i love to talk so definitely reach out and i appreciate you guys for having me on for sure. thank you for coming no through yes all right jimmy talk to the people yes sir hey shout out uh joycey j coming in the building man thank you for um chopping it up with us you know that was my first time like i told you how i got introduced i just did two clicks and found you you know what i'm saying i Come found on. the juice chicago and i'm like who buying this y'all y'all set up look similar to us boom click found your page you know ask for an interview i'm i'm about bridging gaps you know what i'm saying if definitely if it's able to you know but hey shout out to you for coming through make sure y'all get in tune with everything she got going on get in tune with the juice chicago pr uh specials and all that and mm -hmm. hey uh shout out um Shout out Illinois Radio one time. Make sure y'all get in tune with the brand. Follow us, Ill Sound Radio, I L L S O U N D Radio. Submit music to Illinois Radio. Stream your music 24 7. Make sure you submit music on the blog as well, illinois.co slash submit. Follow me at Groove Nuke, G R O O V N U K E. And I'm all I'm always out of breath around this time. So tell me what you got to say to him. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm probably I'm probably like the reverse of what a radio host is. I don't like coming into interviews doing much research on people because I want to learn about you in the conversation. And I feel sure. like I learned a lot about you in this conversation, other than me going to your IG real quick and seeing that you had 22 come K followers. You feel me? That's the only <laughs> research I did. But 
to see where you started and where you are now, you feel me? Everybody, nobody actually sees they self where they supposed to be. I don't care what nobody say. Like, it's hard to be like, man, I'm going to be here one day. And then 10 years later, you there. It's a lot of steps that go into that process. You feel me? It's a lot of pivoting that goes into that process. Right. So I'm when you said you had a condo at 22, I'm like, all right. She know how to keep it moving and then move on to the next step. You feel me? Because I would have got kicked out. You know what I'm <laughs> they would kick me up out of that <laughs> Almost. <laughs> but basically what I'm saying is salute to you. Thank Everything you. you got going on, just keep grinding, keep growing. And when you are in that position to give back, just make sure you give back. You feel me? Because the only yeah, way we're going to change how people, how Chicago view Chicago is us helping Chicago. Yeah, Absolutely. Me? And speaking of giving back, I have a non-for-profit. Oh, yeah. Talk and about with it. my non-for-profit, um, yes, my goal is to give back to my community because our kids are everything. Before we end this interview, we have to just share light on our kids. Kids mm. are everything. Thanks. I love kids. Um, my nieces and nephews, I love them. Um, so, yes, with my non-for-profit, my non-for-profit, I named it actually under my radio show, The Jew Chicago. So, um, eventually, yes, I am going to get grant writers and throw events for the community. That's I definitely know. the goal. And uh, for those who want to know more about my non-for-profit, my website is in my bio on The Jew Chicago page. For sure, for sure. And with that said, man, it's Ill Sound Radio. Until next week. Yes, hey. sir. Signing out. <laughs>